today's episode, featured videos include. Today's bonus features include. Hi there, everyone. Welcome to episode 36 of the Supplemental Broadcast here on Alexandria Alternative Media Broadcasting and OK Copernicus Production. I'm your host, Jess, but you can also call me Epitome or Burn Kid because I'm Epitome the Burn Kid. <laughs> Please be sure to follow the entire archival project, hashtag YouTube recommended chronicles on X or Tumblr for the latest videos, music, memes, and more. Listen to the official soundtrack on SoundCloud. And if you're watching me on YouTube, please be sure to find me on Rumble should anything happen to this channel. All links discussed in today's episode can be found below in the description box. And please be sure to subscribe, like, share, follow, comment, tell a friend about the many uh, things we cover in our program because this stuff is really important. And uh, just a little reminder, uh, I do take breaks for EMF sensitivity, um, so pardon any uh, breaks. Um, these are some really trying times, if I do say so myself. And uh, for deeper dives on the more spiritual and uh, esoteric side of the topics that we uh, cover uh, here on the program, coupled with a hearty syllabus of phenomenal information in the form of more YouTube videos. Don't forget to check out my new series, Pan Panen Pious Prophetic Ponderings. It's a tongue twister worth watching. Um, it's, if you like my auspicious op-ed, you'll really enjoy it. So without further ado, let's go on to today's uh, featured video recommendations. Our first video feature comes in from Essential Salt channel and is titled Hegel Explained the master-slave dialectic. As a huge philosophical uh, enthusiast, it is always my pleasure to introduce solid philosophy lessons uh, through well-made videos, especially on uh, matters that have been troubling us progressively throughout the era and are highly prevalent in today's uh, deeper understanding of current events. Uh, so let's take a look at the creator's excerpt uh, for our first video for more. Uh, and I quote, G. W. F. Hegel is one of the most difficult philosophers in the Western canon, but today we attempt to uh, de demystify him. In this episode, we'll break down Hegel's uh, phen phenomenology, the dialectic and the Hegelian understanding of desire, our concrete entry point into the thought of Hegel, is his uh, famous chapter, The Master-Slave Dialectic. Uh, Deleuze argued that Nietzsche's work constitutes a rejection of Hegel. His master and slave morality can be read as a direct rebuke to Hegel's interpretation of this very same power uh, relation. In order to prepare for our reading of Deleuze, we're going to first uh, tangle with Hegel on his own terms and understand the very different way in which he approaches the questions of consciousness, morality, and perspective. In researching this episode, Nathan Witter's uh, lectures on Hegel and Deleuze were very helpful, as was Justin Burke's lecture on Hegel. And uh, I just want to remind everyone that a lot of these uh, 20th century philosophers, uh, especially from the German tradition, if you want to understand what is going on today, understanding these works and putting them in more of a 21st uh, century uh, way of uh, viewing them and seeing how they've evolved, especially technocratically, is really going to enlighten you on the matters of today, kind of like why I bring you this show, so we can get more enlightened on the matters of today. So let's go from philosophy to current events. Um, our second video feature comes in from China Observer and is titled, Don't Go to China, the CCP monitors your fingerprints, face, and voice. You know, kind of like they're trying to do to all the Western world now. Uh, it is relatively obvious that uh, all Western cultures and many private organizations wish to use, abuse, and exploit us for data. So let's take a look at everyone's current totalitarian role model of the year, the CCP. Here is an excerpt uh, from this uh, video's uh, description box, and I quote, Even more advanced technologies like iris and uh, voice recognition are employed for high-tech surveillance targeting specific individuals. And believe you me, I know how this feels. Uh, these technologies are uh, specifically designed for the Chinese Communist Party's stability uh, maintenance efforts. Yeah. 
stability, maintenance efforts. Let that sink in, you know, when, especially how they like to use the word democracy. Yeah. Uh, the CCP can thus intercept any potential incidents before the Chinese population resorts to petitions or protests. The research in the field of biometric recognition technology at the Chinese Academy of Sciences Institute of Automation has reached a level where it can uh, identify not only fingerprints, irises, facial features, palm prints, and voices, but also handwriting and even your gait as you uh, like walk or whatever. So uh, look out, they're they're perfecting all this stuff and they handed us little little spy devices to spy on us and so that we can snitch on each other. It's pretty sick, is it not? Uh, on to the third video, uh, which is uh, <laughs> titled, uh, how are the religions of the world connected? And this comes in from the uh, channel a book of king and from their description box uh this is what i have for you all the topic of religion has been a common theme on this channel and with this latest episode we will discuss the interconnectedness of world religions from their common origins to the ways in which they would influence one another and this includes the uh religions as follows uh proto-indo-iranian religion Zoroastrian, Zoroastrianism, uh, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sheikhism, and uh, Baha'i. And as uh, many of you know, if you've been following the show for a while, none, all of these religions are inspired from way more ancient religions from civilizations long, long, long gone. Um, and they all have uh, common, common connections and... Uh, I'm here to bring you more info like that. I, I'm here to try to get the word out about the truth because they've tried to paint a lie throughout history, religion, um, and, and world events. And they try to cover it up with wars and they try to cover it up with genocides and other horrible things. And the only reason I do this show is because it's the only little bit that I can do to try to help make a difference and bring awareness to these topics. So please share, please like, please help me in the algorithm, guys. Uh, part of the reason there's also break is because morale. I'm not really, um, this isn't picking up the way that, that I, uh, that I was hoping. I understand that I'm more advanced along for all the sort of, uh, awakening and ascension and, uh, great resist videos. Um, but, uh, everyone, uh, please, if, if you're learning anything, please hook me up, hook me up with a like, hook me up with some comments, hook me up with some shares. Because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing this for, for the love, but the algorithm doesn't really love those of us who tell the truth. So all you lovers of truth, please help us in the algorithm. It, it, it gets hard sometimes, y'all. <laughs> now that I've done my, my moping for everyone, uh, on to our fourth video. And uh, here's a little more uh, theology focus for us to think about uh, this week. And that is... Um, coming in from Theology Unleashed, their channel. And uh, it is a nice chaser for the last selection, if I might add. And it is titled, When Science Becomes a Religion, which we all know totally happened. And the results are horrid atrocities of ignorance, context, nuance, and fallacy in a multitude of differing expressions. Um, a snippet from the description box, uh, describes this video as follows. Edward Dutton is an author, YouTuber, and researcher. His main focuses are anthropology and social science, but his first degree was in theology. In this video, we discuss when science becomes a religion. Oftentimes in a debate or discussion, arguments will be given for or against a position which are not scientific in their rationale, but rather religious. This means instead of employing arguments and evidence, uh, they employ appeals to authority. There are many issues with this way of thinking, uh, which we discuss. And this is a big problem that I am especially seeing on social med media, um, especially those of us who uh, have been banished. The appeal to authority is the AI. The AI said we broke a rule that clearly wasn't broken because the AI just makes up its own idea of what something means in its head and has no human context. So um, I'm going to be bringing not just current events uh, on the show, but I'm going to be bringing a lot more uh, academic type information so that 
so that we can all better understand all of what is unfolding um, in these uh, end times, beginning times, whatever you want to think of them as, ascension. Um, eschatology matters. Eschatology is not just for, you know, Christians and 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 things like that. Eschatology is for everyone. Understanding the uh, disaster cycle, understanding these uh, these uh, cycles of the rise and fall of civilizations and cultures. Um, all of this is so important for us to process and make it through what is coming because we're overdue and it's that time again, my friends. So on to another fun one. Our uh, fifth video, Back to the Current Events, comes in from the Pleb Reporter and is titled The Farmer Protest have gotten insane um and while there is a, a description lacking uh the coverage of these protests across the world has uh been lacking recently but these protests are still going on and they are making a difference be sure to support your local farmers and all the wonderful people uh fighting uh the good fight for us to eat healthy organic food especially the depopulators are trying to cause a famine through greenwash policies, uh, declaring eminent domain and geoengineering famines, which they uh, will hope force us into eating their synthetic ultra processed garbage, cancer nuggets and toxic seed oils and the bugs, of course. So, uh, yeah, um, support your farmers and uh, definitely support your homesteaders. And please, everyone, it's important that we all know how to procure our own food. Uh, true wealth is being able to live on the land um, in peace and, and abundance. True wealth has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with status. True wealth has to do with having all the basics. And if we didn't live this weird modern life, oh, we would be so much closer to, to heaven. And considering that I'm thinking we might be living in hell or a hell realm uh it's time to raise holy heaven because hell is horrible let's bring a little little taste of heaven to hell shall we guys and our final video for our uh main features uh comes in from redacted and it's titled they're exposing biden's secret migrant camps on the east coast of the u.s don't even get me going on the dissenters detention camps that are being built in all 50 states. Um, you can also find that information on Redacted's page as well. Um, but we're going to start with this for now. So while I am a bit more disturbed about, uh, you know, the facilities for the dissenters, it would appear the high muckety muck lizard overseers treat the invaders they're enabling like chattel uh granted a very manipulative malevolent set of civil liberties um and uh he, from uh their uh box uh for their description um they have another video linked to this video that they suggest um that you go watch and um at least uh, three large compounds were exposed in new york city where uh, drugs are uh, being sold and armed criminals are left to come and go as they please. And these are being run and, and facilitated and functioned by NGOs and departments of our government, like, and a bunch of like shifty nonprofits. We, we have to get as much awareness to these issues, everyone, as possible. We have to bring the change. Everyone for literally centuries has allowed the people at the top to run the show, it's not their world. It's not even their country. They're supposed to be representing us. They represent themselves, everyone. Please help me fight the good fight. And uh, please, please help get this information out there. Um, please help me boost my morale. I would really appreciate it. Here comes Socrates. I think he's gonna crash the camera again. I hope he doesn't crash the camera again, but I know he's gonna do it. <laughs> So let me go on to my bonus features. Um, hopefully he'll let me finish filming this episode. Um, the uh, Cosmic Knowledge of the Knights Templar by Rudolf Steiner um, from Rudolf Steiner Audio Press. I have for you guys down in the description box. Uh, the Spiritual Roots of Narcissism, um, The Fallen, um, The Alchemist, and this comes in from the channel The Alchemist. Then uh, I have in from uh, Candace Owens' uh, fired video from We Woke Now. Uh, that's uh, the name of the channel, so We Woke Now. Arrested for speaking in your own home, Scotland's authoritarian free speech crackdown, the new culture forum. 
that's a good one. Uh, CIA didn't find the spiritual realm. They found something much worse. That's a, another good one to watch by a, uh, Rujin uh, KD. And uh, the Most High is exposing the synagogue of Satan. All of their accomplices are all quiet. And that video um, feature comes in from Big Judah. And if uh, you could just give me one moment to get my little boy. Come here, soccer. Filming a show with this little guy in such a cramped space isn't the easiest thing in the world, but you know what? Such is a labor of love. So time for my auspicious op-ed. Uh, this one is uh, titled A uh, Mega Classical uh, Transcendental Absurdist Understanding of Current Events. And here it goes. Uh, I hope these words uh, inspire um, you guys to make some words of your own and to really uh, take some action on these matters because uh, we got to do this from the bottom up, not from the top down. They have no incentive to help us. They have every incentive to depopulate us just so they can take our stuff. <laughs> and on to the op-ed. Over the past 18 months of receiving the vast amounts of information I have from my most auspicious algorithmic informant, Magic 8-Ball, it is safe to say that many of my former stances and views have entered into many new stages of refinement, reform, innovation, and transformation just as rapidly as new understanding and insight takes hold. I wish to take some time and elaborate on some of the new things I have been learning looking at the past and present through a mega classical lens has been uh, crucial to holding still um, unfolding timeline scenarios to a deep dynamic continuity and contextual account of relevant connections between pieces to this enormous multidimensional mosaic we are all decoding here together. A mega classical lens will have you focusing on evolutions, deviations, and continuity of events from what is proposed as the Neolithic era, um, just after the last ice age, basically, all the way up to current times, while including a plethora of crucial data not acknowledged publicly by the powers that be. The only other pieces required to understand how I have focused um, said mega classical lens is to hold your area of focus on matters to be evaluated with a distinct highlight on the transcendence of the absurdity that can empower our efforts for a much better and brighter future. Transhumanism, globalism, depopulation, mental side, and the very artificial, highly suspect data age that has been thrust uh, onto everyone did not just come from nowhere. The origins of this anti-human agenda date back much further than my mega classical lens could possibly focus in on. But let us all assume that whatever is going on currently is probably similar to accounts of Atlantis or Lemuria. In the age we're currently residing, I think placing an increased effort in focusing on Tataria and the many reset wars um, that happened uh, throughout the uh, 1800s and early 20th century uh, will provide the highest chances of rebuilding all of the basic human necessities that the psychopathic cabal overseeing the currently unfolding multi-pronged assault on all natural organic life from every substance and sensory standpoint, they could discover a way to exploit. Let me be the first to tell you that if their big moves um, have been in century-sized increments thus far, it truly shouldn't take but a mere fraction of that to bring it to its knees. Once you can see and understand the big picture, all manufactured narratives become laughable at best and malevolently insulting or recklessly negligent at worst. Now that we've gotten all the heavy part out of the way, let me tell you what I am most looking forward to about being a part of starting the new cycle or the next era here on Earth. The first thing is that it has been a relief that the vast majority of our experience here 
has been but a mere speck in comparison to what our existence would be like here if we were living as God, nature, or um, our uh, species were intended. I highly doubt that we were intended to live under the values imposed on us that appear to be anti-life, anti-organic, and anti-natural. It would also appear that those idiot lizards in charge didn't understand that once they revealed themselves to be a legitimate threat to all organic life, especially that which is spiritual in nature, we would quickly be able to point at the sources and causes of all discontent quickly and clearly. Another great facet I have discovered is just how unlearned and under-researched these highly credentialized characters truly are which would indicate that now knowing their only tactics are intimidation, bribery, and lies, um, and that's the baseline they operate from, uh, drastically and dramatically reduces any respect, tolerance, clout, or other forms of compliance and enablement they have been fraudulently gleaning from repression, sheltering, um, ignorance, and uh, self-censoring, etc., uh, that they ultimately demand as their tribute or penance. The last major takeaway that has relieved me in recent times is that just about every part of our contemporary way of life is extremely damaging to one's health. So in all honesty, most practices need to be reduced greatly or stopped entirely based on their danger or toxicity. Moving on to new ways of life is much easier when the old ways are literally killing or debilitating the vast majority of us prematurely due to radiation, poisons, and uh, contaminants that come as a side effect to the average post-industrialized existence. Upon knowing that this method is the only one they have and that it is only effective when people are in the dark, should be more motivation to share information on these matters as far and wide as we possibly can while stating we know exactly what the intentions, goals, and justifications are so that we might squelch them most quickly. Truth, freedom, and sovereignty are what they are after for one reason and one reason only. It is the only way that those who invented systems to surpass systems can game the system within the system. If we don't have any dependency or need for their game, not only does the system lose all relevance, the inventors, regulators, and managers, and legislators will be seen as the fraudulent grifters, oh, sorry, fraudulent uh, drafters of a supposed social contract that is antisocial in nature, to say the very least. This is why representative democracy especially should raise a red flag when you really look at what is going on at the end of the day. Those who dedicated their life to paying for permission slips in the form of multiple degrees and schmoozing taught the entire world that they only respect people who bought their way through the world. It's that simple, everyone. And that is today's auspicious op-ed. Our musical selection comes in from yours truly, Epitome, Epitome of the Burn Kid, and is titled The Truth Shall Set You Free. It also has a really fantastic music video. Links for all of that are in the description. As always, all of the links to follow me on uh, social media, send email to the show. We, we love fan mail. If you want to send some fan mail, I would like to start doing a you know, fan segment. Um, and uh, definitely um, check out um, the you know, SoundCloud and everything else in the links that I have for you. We appreciate any and all support. This work is not monetized. But as you know, times are tough and this does take a lot of time and effort for me to go through all of this knowledge for everyone. Um, I work on this project, I'd say a good six hours, five to six hours a day when it comes to archiving, cataloging, uh, curating an episode, writing an episode, filming an episode, editing an episode and getting it up. I don't have employees, I have no one, I just have me. 
Um, because uh, if you're like me, you know, chosen one, light worker, etc., the world just isn't going to have you. So any and all support from my fellow brethren is always most appreciated. Links in the description. Like I like to tell you guys every single time, stay safe, stay prepped, stay awesome, and continue to be excellent one to one another. We need that more now than ever. And I will see everyone next time on the supplemental broadcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and follow Epitome out.